Hey guys, Ed here, Top of the Line Training. Just doing a video today on a uh, basic necessity that uh, you should know how to make if the situation came to it, and that's a lean-to. So today, between these two trees right here, I'm gonna go ahead and build a lean-to up and try to take it step by step, show you how I go. So the clock's ticking, let me get going. Alright guys, that top of the line training. I went ahead and down my gear and I had me a little snack before I got going. Get my energy up. Just a couple bars and uh tomato so anyway um, I went ahead and measured the uh, space between the trees and uh, I'm a little shorter than this so about right there, about right there so. I do have my Baco Laplander saw I always carry it in the woods start cutting tree, old pine fell down. Um, clean this up a little bit more. Two hawks. Tomahawk, check it out guys. Bad to the bone. When I did the demo of this, I cut down a few little trees and whatnot, saplings and this and that. And I probably had a free piece like this, <coughs> and I was freehanding it, holding it, and whatnot. Anyway, this uh, dingleberry counted how many times it took me to cut through a piece of wood or whatever. And okay, fine. Uh, it took 28 times. I don't know. Uh, it was the first time I ever used this, and this is really about the fourth time I've ever used it. I'm not really... Uh, I've always done martial arts with the tomahawk on and off, but I've never really used a nice, real nice, probably top of the line hawk in the woods like this or making things and whatnot. So, you know, I'm learning as I go with this thing. And, uh, you know, no big deal. I mean, if you want to, if you don't have nothing better to do than count how many times it takes me to cut through something, it's all right. But, you know, the two hawks. Don't uh, discard the hawk because this thing is, I'm telling you, this thing is made very well and it's, I don't know if you can find a better one. You probably could somewhere maybe, I don't know, but it's really nice. All right, guys, that back with the top of the line training and uh, only have one hank of uh, 550. I like to always carry at least a hank with me because... 
you never know what kind of situation you could be in. And having some cordage with you is the key, but I like to have a hank of 550 because it serves, first of all, it doesn't take up much space. You can throw it in your cargo pocket, something like that, back pocket, whatever, coat pocket. But this is probably about a, at least a 25 feet, maybe 30 feet piece. But as you know, it has the seven strands inside. So you can use that for various things. One thing you want to do when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's pretty warm today. It's probably around 65 to 70 degrees, I'm guessing. And uh, you don't want to, um, you don't want to um, be messing around out here, getting all hot and sweaty. I'm already hot, but so try to conserve your calories, your, your energy, and your your water, um, your uh, you know your uh, staying hydrated. So if you're sweating it all out, you're going to need to drink more. If you don't have any, that's another situation. So it all goes together, really. You know, it all goes together. Where, um, and uh, it's on there tight. Let to see what we got here. Okay, we're up on. There. I'm gonna tie this side. Stay with me. This is the running end. I'm just turn the turn overhand knot in there. Just sort of did the same thing over here. Got a trucker's hitch. Right, now this thing is solid on there. I don't think it's going anywhere. I'm telling you, it's pretty damn solid. All right, guys, Ed here, top of line training. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Hudson Bay knife. Clean up this uh, pole here to this beam. And I'm just showing this as an example, now this is pine again. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Right? This is pine, and you know, it's a piece of dead wood, basically. But I'm just showing here what a big chopper can do. I believe this is eight three quarter inch blade. Nice whopping uh, blade, man. Look at that thing. It's a beast. Um, I'll just say this. <clears throat> For the money, for the money, this is hard to beat, guys. Hard to beat. It's, I believe this list for about, I think you can get it for about 30 bucks on Amazon. I'm not 100% sure about that. I paid $30 and some change for it. I believe the retail MSRP is 60 But I want to say on Amazon you can get it for 30 I got it for 30 And I'm going to tell you something, for 30 bucks. This knife is something else. It sharpens well. Um, it's got a it's it's 1075 carbon steel, ferro rod sparked. I've done a review on it. I've, done, I've used it a few times. Defense knife. Um, it's something else. As a chopper, though, I'm just saying. Say I didn't have my tomahawk or an axe with me. I just had this and my saw. You could do a lot of stuff with it. Now. Are you gonna get, you can whittle with it. Are you gonna get down and do a bunch of real little things? I doubt it. So maybe have a pocket knife. So you have this saw and a pocket knife. This, a tomahawk or ax and a pocket knife. If you're carrying something like this, you should have a little smaller knife with it just in case for, for just real delicate, fine task. You could use this for making uh, four um, deadfall traps. Oh, gamut. It, it will work. You can do that. But I'm talking more like a spoon, making making a spoon or something like that. So, but as you can see, I mean, this thing's razor sharp. I got it pretty damn sharp. So, I mean, don't discount the big choppers. But just because it's a big blade and you can chop with it doesn't mean you have to chop with it. I mean, there's a lot of things, you you know... It's just a, it gives you that option, and that's what I like. I like to be able to come out, you know, I got this, let's say a pocket knife, or this and a uh, debaco saw. So, I mean, I can do a lot of stuff with this. So. I'm in the process 
of getting a uh, yellow hawk sheep made for this thing. Just haven't uh, they got some other things going on with him, so I'm working on some stuff. But I'd like to really get a, a sheep made for this, and I will. It's coming. Uh, we're just doing a couple other things with him right now. So anyway, here is first bean. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, I like to run them into the ground like that. You can get a smaller, like a Y beam, nail it in, run another beam on the bottom, run on that. Maybe we'll do that. We'll see. Okay, let me uh, let me get set up here. I'll be ready. All right, I'm back with you. Top of the line training. Just got my first Y beam. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut another one of these. I'm gonna sharpen this up, drive it into the ground, and I'll run a beam. A horizontal beam between the two, and uh, then I'll rest the uh, roof beams, if you will. I don't know exactly what they're called, but uh, vertical beams, beams, I guess, on this beam. I'll show you. So, two back pieces, fairly similar, close as I can get it, good enough for government work. top of line training and uh, it's getting late that's two hours work right there now don't add in the camera work because you know turn it off stop it reset it move it around definitely take probably 15 minutes or so off of work time but that's what I have so far we're gonna leave it here we're gonna come back probably next week or something and continue to work on it in fact maybe even finish it up i don't know <clears throat> and uh we'll see how that goes till the next one this is that top of line training stay safe god bless we'll see you then